and you get it right the first time. You get it right the first time. Get it right the first time. Get it right the first time, okay? What if racism was a mental health issue? I mean, think about it. Racists suffer from their own kind of PTSD. Their symptoms include agitation and irritability. Got an immigration paper? Fucking cockroach. Hostility. Go back to wherever the fuck you come from, lady. Hypervigilance. Don't you hate when you're inside a store and the cashier's stuff's following you like... She think I'm stealing. She think I'm stealing. Look. Social isolation. <laughs> Fucking lazy monkeys. Maybe the tenth one I've seen in my life, too. You know, clearly, liberals aren't the only ones that are triggered, but by Let's what? Get something straight. A bunch of sore losers occupying a space is called a tantrum, and that's exactly what we're seeing around the nation after Trump's historic and earned victory. Hail Trump! Hail victory! Well, the United States is traumatized by its origins in slavery and genocide. And that trauma hasn't ended. We were taught in school that because of some brave people's sacrifices, that our society has become more and more just and equal over time. Has it? The Cleveland Police Department is now responding to a wrongful death lawsuit by blaming a 12-year-old boy for his own death. <laughs> Slavery ended, but today, one in 15 black men are incarcerated many in private prisons where they perform labor for pennies. Hi. We thought we were done colonizing native lands, but, you know, Standing Rock proves otherwise. Oh, and everyone's just trying to help each other out and survive. We apologize for interning Japanese Americans, but it seems like Trump would like to do the same thing to Muslim Americans. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Islam hates us. We've coped with these contradictions by describing history as a march towards freedom, because the reality is too painful to face. The reality is that our racial history doesn't tell a story of progress, but of PTSD. And every new racist episode is like a flashback. Racism was defined by the President's Joint Council on Mental Health in Children in 1959 as being the number one mental health problem among children in the United States. So am I just saying that people who demand racist and xenophobic agendas are just mentally ill? Yeah, but that doesn't let them off the hook. We can hold alcoholics accountable for drunk driving while still encouraging them to seek help. We can hold veterans with PTSD accountable for domestic violence while still sympathizing with their painful condition. And we can hold racists accountable. We need to hold racists accountable for their actions and their violence at the same time that we try to treat and heal our country's racist affliction. So let's talk about solutions. Well, first off, starting conversations about race and racism is not enough. Robin D'Angelo describes white fragility as defensiveness about race. I'm 15% Sub-Saharan African and 80% European. Wow. Open discussion about race is denied. That denial looks like arguing. When we're talking about diversity, y you do it in the casting of the film, not in the casting of the show. Whew. Wow, okay. Silencing. This is so <laughs> egregious that it would be so Corey, outrageous sir, that you know the George Costanza, that's what he would won. be called. Corey, you're being a horrible person right now. Let me finish. If this was Donald Trump. Running away. So even if we want to have a conversation, we're not going to get one. Psychotherapists employ exposure therapy, controlled ways to confront the trauma rather than avoiding reminders of it. We need to face it and each other head on. So let's take lessons from psychotherapy to heal through protest. Well, that means we have to revisit the trauma. Protesters gather to create signs and assemble a symbolic funeral service in March in memory of 12-year-old Tamir Rice, who was shot and killed by a Cleveland police officer. We have to speak about it explicitly over and over again. Say her name! Say her name! Say her name! We have to confront all these distressing situations. Because racism will always repeat until we interrupt it. We need you to be strong, not fragile. That means not letting your uncle or friends off the hook for the racism. You wouldn't abandon them if they had a mental illness. What I'm saying is uncomfortable and it'll likely get pretty ugly, but confronting them is how you help them. 
We have to stop thinking of racism as a formal position. This person is racist, that thing is racist. It's a pathology, and it values white lives over others. Share this video. Take everyone you know that suffers from the same condition. This matters.